Welcome back. Our co-host, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Two stop. Thank you, Rob. I was quite impressed with our past two guests, uh, uh, Kevin and uh, Dr. Sachs. they uh, doing good things. Kevin's really slimmed segment. down, man. Yeah. yeah. He's he's looking good. Uh, also, uh, Maria Lawrence and also. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Hey, uh, you've been... Uh, Mapping out the whole Lake Thomas thing for everybody in the back. Remember, we, we discussed this. They were using your house as, as the public restroom for Lake Thomas. Yeah, yeah. You got that well, worked out? Um, we haven't mapped it out completely. But Bill and I can help. Yeah, we're ready. Yeah. We're ready. Um, when that whole thing gets converted, the Lawrensons have been very generous about this, Bill. <laughs> very generous. They're going to offer up uh, concessions and uh, free yeah, for, oh, that's right. yeah. yeah. for anybody, anytime, anytime. 24 and hours a day. And I'll yeah. rent that really high-end yeah. porta john yeah. that we yeah. used and, for a rehearsal and, dinner. And, 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 the, and the judge will probably be monitoring the porta john so yeah, 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 make yeah. sure they pay before they go in. you got to obey the law. you got to <laughs> obey the law. Our guest in this segment, uh, one of our favorite guests, Jerry Olson. Uh, not just because he just uh, brought me this really cool autographed Mel Blunt photo. Where did you get this, Jerry? This, uh, we brought some, I brought some Redskin, my, my uh, camera freaked out over it. Uh, some Redskin alumni up to do Ranson Days, mm -hmm. and at Ranson Days, signing autographs was also Mel Blunt and Tutal Jones. So when he was signing autographs, I knew I had a Pittsburgh friend, and I got him to sign one for you. You're a good dude. That is, that is greatly appreciated. This will look very good in my, my finish downstairs where the, uh, the bar is. What, what do you got, uh, Colin? Colin's pointing and saying something to Jerry. His mic's not. Is it on? His this, earphones. This one is, of your earphones is the wrong way. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do I need them? No. You, you take them off if you want to. That's, <laughs> I've had Just that problem. Down. Yeah. I've had that problem, Jerry. It's so. not a shot glass, Jerry. Don't slam it down. <laughs> you just finished it. I'm 29 <laughs> years sober. I don't know those shot glasses God bless anymore. you, brother. God bless you. <laughs> hey, it's uh, August the 26th. Doug Widmeyer Memorial. Charity Golf Classic that will be held on benefit uh, for Habitat for Humanity, Eastern Panhandle. That's where it goes, at the woods. And I see Mark Mosley's picture there in his name. Yes, Mark is our honorary chap, uh, chairman for this our third year. Uh, most people know Doug Widmeyer. Doug was like an icon in Martinsburg and state of West Virginia, uh, either liked or disliked. But he was an icon at any point, did a lot for the community. I got to know him, we became friends, uh, we're members at St. John's Lutheran Church, mm -hmm. and uh, I helped him do uh, something. He was active with the rescue mission, so I had Dexter Manley come out, and we did a fundraiser for the rescue mission. And then uh, he asked me to come keep him company on the board of directors of Habitat for Humanity of the Eastern Panhandle. Well, I did come on the board to keep him company, and then... 30 days later, he passed away and left me there by myself. Now, somehow, I'm vice president of Habitat for Humanity of the Eastern. But they want me to raise money. So what mm -hmm. we did is we started a, a golf tournament three years ago in memory of Doug Widmeyer. And it's been very successful. We do it at the Woods. And it's going to be on August 26th. We sign in at 8.30 and tee off at 10 o'clock. The nice thing about the tournament is part of the Tournament of Champions. So what they do is they do a lot of tournaments at the Woods, and then those that are involved in Tournament of Champions, they take the winning team, and they compete in the Tournament of Champions in the fall. Mm -hmm. All expenses paid. So uh, if you win, you get a chance to go on and play again. The nice thing for Habitat or the charities is that the winning team, the uh, Woods donates $3,000 to that charity. Cool. So. Very nice. Uh, Jer, when we were talking on the phone, I think you were telling me you're 86 now? 86. <clears throat> and yeah. you call Bill Stubblefield kid. Is that right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, he's a kid. He's I'm one, a kid. <laughs> he's one of our young guys. Uh, but as I told you, both he and I, people always say, well, Jerry, how are you doing? I say, I'm maintaining. <laughs> My favorite word is, man, I don't need to be up. I don't need to be down. I just want to hang in with uh, what I'm doing. But I feel good. You look uh, great, man. Still, still active with alumni and, and work with the guys. Uh, one of the problems with getting to be 86 or 90 is that your friends are leaving you. Yeah. And uh, But uh, it's good to feel good. If you take care of yourself, as I said, sobriety has helped a lot. That helps. Yeah. Yeah, God bless you, man. So do you do you spend much of your time now still at uh, Redskins Park or whatever it's called these days? Uh, no. 
uh, I was there yesterday because they had alumni day at training camp. Mm -hmm. When I used to have an office for like 10 years at Redskin Park. I never worked for the Redskins, but I always had an office there. They provided an office to our association. In 1958, the Redskins started the Redskins Alumni Association. Caring for kids is our motto. So by when Bruce Allen came as president, he said, why don't you have an office here? So he gave us a free office, and they didn't have an alumni director at the time. So anytime Bruce needed something from the alumni, he just asked me to, to help him do it. So, mm -hmm. But when COVID hit, they closed Redskin Park uh, to everybody but the players and the coaches. And then Rivera never got it back the other way. So uh, what they did is they said, well, you know, we'll give you an office over at FedEx Field. I said, well, FedEx Field's 100 miles from my house. I don't think I'm going to be going to FedEx Field. So, yeah, as opposed to so I can work with the alumni from the house, and, mm -hmm. and we do things. As, as the alumni get older and, you know, they're passing away, and the new – when free agency hit the NFL, then players are there for four years and they leave. Because with Daryl Green yesterday, Daryl was there 20 years. Yeah. They, 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 people don't do that anymore. At the end of their rookie contract, they're chasing money. So uh, it, 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 you don't really have an alumni association. Uh, we just still do a golf tournament. We uh, I joined our golf tournament last year with uh, a veterans group. And we do a golf tournament called Legends and Heroes. And every foursome has two captains one is an nfl legend and the other's a military hero and we did it we had uh nf uh medal of honor recipients there silver star wounded warriors and it's really been a good tournament and this is our second year for that tournament cool. so the guys still do a lot that are active that can play golf and everything the joe jacobis the people like that have you met the new owner i have not met the new owner i uh I like everything they've done uh, with free agency. Uh, Rivera and Gruden didn't like free agency. They liked the draft. I like free agency because you've seen the guy play for four years. Mm -hmm. um, but they like the rookies. So I like he improved. This team is better than it was last year. Uh, they built up the offensive line through free agency. They built up the linebacker. They had a great linebacker and built up some receivers. So. Uh, they're going to be better. Now, you don't have to be too much better to win more than four games. So, uh, <laughs> so they don't really have a too tough a chore. But I think how well they do is how well this rookie quarterback works out. And they've been through a few first-round quarterbacks over the last uh, 30 years. Well, we've been through – we've had three quarterbacks break their legs. Mm -hmm. We had two break their legs in the same year. So, And the most uh, famous leg break of all, Joe Theismann. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did I ever tell you my, my Daryl Green story, Jerry? No. So it was uh, 1997, I think. It was the year the, that uh, the Redskins tied uh, the Giants in overtime. I think it was like 7-7. Seven, seven. It was not a very p particularly interesting game, but it was the game in which Gus Farad had butted the stadium wall nice. and knocked himself out of the game. Okay? Yeah. So and I was there with David Avella because he had club seats at the time. David's now the president of GOPAC. So David and I went to the game. And the tickets that he had, this, he had some arrangement with Sam Huff because he worked with Sam at the Charlestown uh, uh, events that they did there. So we got to go on the field for pregame, the fourth quarter, and postgame. And since the game went to full overtime, we were on the field for a, a lot of that game, uh, pre and post. So in the pregame, they're doing uh, warm-ups, and Daryl Green is in a line to catch passes. And I think Jeff Hostetler was with the Redskins at that time because I think he ended up finishing up the game when Ferrat knocked himself out with that silly headbutt of the wall. Wall's always going to win, by the way, Maria, when you headbutt Amen. the wall. Amen. <laughs> so they're running fly patterns now, and it's Green's turn, but he's not paying attention. He's talking to another player, and they're kind of laughing and, and whatever. And Hostetler goes back to pass, and somebody yells, D, D. And, and Green looks over, and Hostetler's already thrown the football because he's thrown to a spot 40 yards downfield. Daryl Green looks over, sees Hostetler release the football, and runs it down while it's in the air 40 yards from a dead start. He ran the ball down 40 yards in the air. Fast. I've never yeah. seen anyone move like that. Yeah, very, very fast. They're retiring his number this year. And they should. Which yeah, I, I was sort of hoping they would do tr uh, 
Charlie Taylor first, but that's a great uh, Washington. One, one of the original Redskins I ever saw because I remember watching the NFL yeah. in the early '70s, and he was a receiver with yeah, them. One of the real, real good guys too. Yeah, I wanted to tell you about this golf tournament too. Here's what I'm going to do: mm-hmm. if they call and sign up as a team. Then they say we really heard you on WRNR. We'll give them fifty dollars off their team sign up. Sweet. What's the regular price? Uh, Five hundred. So they'd be four fifty per team. Per team. Per four. Team of four. Yeah. Just tell them you heard it on WRNR or TV and ten. We'll give them fifty bucks off. Yeah, we'll throw a TV ten in there too as part of it because it's on TV ten as well. You're the boss. <laughs> yes, sir. WRNR TV ten, and you get fifty dollars off your foursome. This is for August the twenty sixth at the Woods. It's to benefit Habitat for Humanity, the Eastern Panhandle, the Doug Widmeyer Memorial Charity Golf Classic, Mr. Stubblefield. Yeah, uh, I'd like to come back to a little bit of your personal history, Jerry, but the Habitat for Humanity is such a great program. I was involved on the board for several years and got a phenomenal, deep uh, impression of the contribution it makes to the community. It helps folks that are unable, that need help at a critical time. Uh, Jerry, you're well familiar with a lot of us. I think I first met you uh, with this, uh, through the Senior Center. Exactly. Uh, you were involved in raising money for Senior Center. You raised money for a lot of different organizations. What brought you to the Eastern Panhandle? Uh, <laughs> when I retired, I lived in Northern Virginia. I lived I was born and raised in Northern Virginia. Went in the Navy in 1956 to 60. Got out, settled in Northern Virginia. When I retired from my real job that paid my bills in 2000, we were living in Northern Virginia. In Ashburn, houses are a thousand, a million dollar yeah. houses. So we came out and we looked at Charlestown, and then we looked at Martinsburg. And instead of a million dollars, you could get a house. I lived in Stonebridge in a golf community. Yeah. It was 155000 sure. And still I could commute to Redskin Park and be there in less than an hour. And since I've been here, I still I belong to a country club over in Percival. So I still go to Virginia a lot. But I love West Virginia. I like the people. Yeah. You know, uh, the traffic's getting a little bit just like it always does. I mean, I was born and raised in Falls Church. It was a... Tyson's Corner was a bar and a filling station. So, you know, that's progress. Houses are building. But I like West Virginia. I like West Virginia University. I like Martinsburg High School. So since I've been here, I really, I like it. I've gotten involved. I worked in the dining room at the racetrack for 16 years. Um, Sam Huff got me involved in the West Virginia Breeders Classic. He came to me, he says, Jerry, he says, I need you to get on my board. I said, Sam, I really got enough to do. I don't need to get on your board. He said, well, you know, you need to learn more about horses. I says, no, I don't. I says, oh. He says, well, I need somebody to run the golf tournament and the breakfast of champion. So I got on. I do that. And I was with the senior center and got yes. uh, like to help the rescue mission. But. You know, I think it's all about giving back. That's right. Uh, you made some a comment about the people. I was asked once, why do we come to West Virginia? And I said, we came to West Virginia for the beauty of the countryside. We stayed in West Virginia because of the beauty of the people. Yes. And it's that's some a, of the most. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's a one of the most uh, friendly, compassionate, caring environments i think i've ever lived in. i came for the solar I, I farms bill you came for the solar farms i, I, needed, to, I needed fields of solar farms <laughs> you're, you're weaving politics into our discussion rob <laughs> miss maria i i came and didn't leave as well rob and i are um are former pittsburgh people but we like the people here uh we like the people here as well so um you made reference to doug doug um was my neighbor for 30 something years um and you know his late wife and now of course doug has passed but um they became really surrogate grandparents for my children and we just had um just incredible relationships with them in fact we talked at my daughter's wedding um uh last month during covid she had a birthday and we of course would invite doug to all of our family gatherings and we had the birthday party um on the driveway in um golf chairs so um so he was 
just a dear, dear friend and just a lovely um, neighbor. And, and who owns his house now? And my daughter <laughs> really? now oh, really? owns his house. <laughs> oh, I wondered what, <laughs> what happened to his house. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. that was uh, that was wonderful, and it is great to have her across the street too. But um, but yeah, this is um, kind of the the tail end of the charity golf tournaments. You can start in about April yeah. and golf just about every what Tuesday, Thursday, all through the summer if you. Um, if you need to, so this is sort of the the grand finale, and it's a Monday. So yeah, I did better. that on purpose. It, we started the first one I did was in May, okay. and there was one every other day. <laughs> I so I moved it to to August to try and get away from some of that. And uh, when I started the first Redskin Alumni Golf Tournament in 1980 in Northern Virginia, Washington D.C., there's only three charity golf tournaments. Now there's one every day. You're right. It's, it's a good way to raise money. Um, the one thing about Habitat, you'd be happy to know we're getting ready to open our restore. I saw that the other day. Somehow, yes. before I ever got there, they closed the restore about about 10 years ago probably now. And that is their source of income. I mean, there's a very active restore in Winchester. There's one in Hagerstown. And one thing I did when I got on the bus, I said, look, because they had money problems, you know, we got to get this restore back open because that's our source of income. So we've got a location over by off Edward Miller Boulevard, right there by the post office. Very, very visible, beautiful center. We've been working on it since April, and we've been collecting stuff for it since April. We have four storage sheds filled with stuff. We started moving it in this week. So I think within the next couple of weeks, you'll see the restore open, which is very important to the community as well as Habitat for Humanity. And uh, Robin, <clears throat> um, the director, right. came and gave a presentation, I think, for the Chamber of Commerce early yeah. this year yeah, um, and did, you know, a wonderful job sort of talking about you know why the restore and why it's important to the mission of habitat and um so that's that's great that that's gonna yeah um, i came with her she did an excellent job with okay. that presentation and she's just a great executive director and, she, and i was gonna say and she's relatively new in that position yeah. as well correct well, well she, she was she, what's her name uh Robin, Robin Keys. 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 Oh, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Jerry Olson is our guest here on the program. It is the Doug Widmeyer Memorial Charity Golf Classic to benefit Habitat for Humanity of the Eastern Panhandle. It's Monday, August the 26th at the Woods. The honorary, honorary chairman is Mark Mosley, and registration is at 8.30. Tea time is 10. It's $125 per person, $500 per team, or $450 if you mention Talk Radio WRNR or TV 10. You get $50 off your team's foursome, and you can sign up by going to R Keys, R K E E S, at habitatep.org. That's how you register. Just send an email there or call 263 3154. 263 3154. Uh, can you also register, Jerry, off the Habitat for Humanity, the Eastern Panhandle yes. website? Yes, you can. Okay. Can, how do you get the discount there if you do that? Uh, Probably can't. Better call. Just tell them I want to pay four fifty. <laughs> <laughs> that would work too. Yeah, so you can save yourself fifty dollars and your your team's uh, force them there. So is Mark Mosley present on the course? Mark is. Mark comes and spends the day with us. Mark's one of the real good guys. Real good guys about giving back. You want me to tell you a Vince Lombardi story? Sure. I have. I had uh, two and a half minutes. All right, Vince Lombardi, as you know, Tommy McVean was our old uh, equipment manager. So he had an intern working with him from Georgetown University. So Lombardi was holding a meeting, and he put this intern on the door and says, do not let anybody in. Lombardi was strange. He was strange with times and strange with meetings. But anyway, so lo and behold, Edward Bennett Williams come by. He's president of the team, and he goes in the meeting. And when the meeting was over, Lombardi came out and berated this guy and told him, you're so stupid, get out of Georgetown University, you're waiting, you're wasting your money, get into a technical school, you'll never amount to anything, how could you let people into this meeting? And you know what, the guy retired as a four-star general. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying Vince was maybe a little wrong. 
right? Oh, gosh, I wish he'd lived longer. I think Sonny Jurgensen would have been the best quarterback to ever play in the National Football League. And uh, he died of cancer shortly after taking that job. He had he one season that, in D.C. He was there a year. Why would you say Jurgensen would be the best that ever played? He did not have a lot of talent. He was smart. He was tough. They but- had a communication somehow that just worked. And Sonny Wright, he didn't have the best arm in the yeah. world. He didn't, but he was not I was, fast. I was talking to a coach yesterday, and I said, you know, it's funny when I started watching it in the '60s, they made this game too complicated. What I watched, Sonny Jurgensen throwing to Jerry Smith down and out, and they did it all the way down the field. A guy was telling me yesterday they're redoing it at Redskin Park. They're rebuilding a whole area in Redskin Park. For analytic department, mm-hmm. not an analytic person, yeah, an analytic person. Now this guy in Philadelphia goes for every fourth down. How many fourth downs in Vince Lombardi's career do you think he ever went for? Probably none. Not a lot. You know, you just take you you kick the ball on fourth down. That's what you do in our day. D- don't overthink it. Yeah, right, Jerry. Good to see you, man. Good to see you guys. Thanks for letting me come in. You guys come out and play golf. I'll give you a discount. I'll give you one more dollar. <laughs> You're looking good, man. <laughs> so $51. 51 Jerry Olson, we are back with the final minute right after this.